This summer, the South Dakota State Historical Society and Army Corps of Engineers held their third annual archaeology camp for kids at the site of Fort Pier 2, a 19th century fur trading post. There's like dirt and there's like grass and uh, there's a lot of bugs. Dirt, grass, and bugs were in abundance, so was learning, as trained archaeologists taught the kids methods of archaeological excavation. In this area of the Missouri River, there's a lot of archaeological sites. There's a whole series of fur trade posts and military posts. Uh, what we have just a little ways down the road is Fort Pier Chateau, which is really well known. Fort Pier 2 is a little bit of a later trading post. Because the Missouri River was being impounded in the, the 1950s and 60s, there was a whole series of archaeological excavations along the Missouri River to kind of figure out which archaeological sites uh, would be damaged when the, the waters uh, were rising in, in what is now Lake Oahe. They basically went from site to site along the river to figure out what would be impacted and what would be damaged. When they were at this site, which obviously isn't flooded by the reservoir, but they did do a little bit of testing. Uh, they scraped off the topsoil and were looking at the structural remnants to see how a fort from this time period would have been built. Fort Pier 2 was opened by the St. Louis fur trading firm of Pier Chateau Jr. sometime after Fort Pier Chateau was sold to the War Department in 1855. The second fort was abandoned in 1865. Perhaps the most important event that transpired there was the killing of Hunkpapa Lakota chief and peacemaker Bear's Rib in 1862. His son, also named Bear's Rib, would continue his father's attempts to make peace with settlers and the U.S. military. Ooh, sites from this time period on the Missouri River in South Dakota kind of have the, the same pattern of artifacts. Uh, at this site in particular, we're finding a ton of maybe mortar or baked clay um, and then some brick fragments too that are kind of uh, remnants of the structures that were here. We're finding some buttons from clothing. Uh, we have a bone button and then some high-fired ceramic buttons. We do have some prehistoric pottery. Uh, from the folks that would have occupied this area before the fur trade and military post. Um, and uh, we do have some glass trade beads. My favorite thing in archaeology camp is looking for artifacts because um, um, on the digging, you can like find s stuff from old, old days and the like, I can learn a lot. Yeah, perfect. Here. Right, is it okay for you to hands? If we don't teach the kids a good methodology, they're essentially just um, glorified um, artifact hunters. And so we want to teach them that context is very important. Um, how deep we find it, what are the surrounding artifacts, uh, what we find with the particular artifact. So um, we like to te teach the kids to dig slowly so that they understand that context is uh, important. Found some coal. You mean charcoal? Yeah, charcoal? People thought they would like um, find stuff here, and we're finding you know, pretty much a lot of stuff. The kids did find a lot of stuff, and with some help from archaeologists, they put that stuff into context, learning how even bits of charcoal or brick can help tell the story of a trading post that, even though it was short-lived, was at the center of some important moments in the history of South Dakota. <laughs>